Bill was my friend. And I just want to pay tribute to him and the countless hours he gave to the Salvation Army. But more important, the people that we serve. The men in our drug rehab program loved Bill. And the times he gave counseling to them, we'll never forget. I've had an opportunity to see Bill in action in so many ways. Uh, he used, we used the term the Army behind the Army, uh, the men in our program, and they specifically referred to Bill as the Army behind the Army, the Army in charge of our Qantas Club. And, and Bill was a wonderful man, and I appreciate it. And our young people are our key club members who rang bells for the Salvation Army for a number of years, happened because of Bill, his desire for the young people to do it. And uh, I can still see him lugging uh, tables. He was a hard worker. And uh, lugging tables and bells and, and, and uh, tripods downtown uh, for the girls. Uh, and our key club members, girls, there at the uh, downtown. And we just appreciated Bill very much. And, and uh, he, he impacted so many lives. We were doing an account the other day of the men that he, uh, that he influenced. And it came into the hundreds of men that Bill personally have guided and given counsel to and helped with, with jobs and positions. And, and, and once again, he made a tremendous impact. I, time does not permit, but uh, I, I made some notes, and I'm going to share them with Mary, but uh, not long enough, but I, uh, I just thought I'd share them with you. But uh, Bill, as I mentioned, was my friend, he was my mentor, he was my fellow Kwanian, and he was a brother in Christ. And I'll never forget his witnessing to me when I've had some problems. And words come to mind, and just quick, quickly, when I think of Bill, uh, his biographical sketch was, was covered pretty well with regard to, with regard to Kiwanis Club and his association, with, his association with the Salvation Army. But I thought of Bill as being organized. He certainly, was that true with you, was your contact with him? He was organized. He was detailed and driven. Bill was disciplined. He was enthusiastic. He was a, a motivator. And he had a positive outlook on life. And how true that was. Uh, prior, during his illness, when he would come. Three weeks ago, he was at our Qantas Club meeting, uh, helping and, and, and giving us guidance and direction. And of course, he was successful in business, and his devotion to his country, of course, has been talked about, and his love for Germany, and his, uh, his, uh, what a devoted husband he was, and what a wonderful father. I just would share these things, too. I hope with Mary, but uh, Bill gave 100% to other people, to people to help that he helped in life. And I just want to thank him on behalf of the Salvation Army for touching so many lives uh, and how much I'm grateful we were missing, we're going to miss him, but how grateful we are for him and what he's, the lives he's touched in his lifetime. God bless you all. Thank you. Is there something else I'd like to share? I just felt that God told me yes. about the ways in which he gave to everybody um, around him on a large scale, and I just wanted to share a few ways that um, he touched my life on a, a, all those little things that made him who he was, and um, some of them are a little humorous. Hi, I'm Caitlin. This is my name, is Caitlin. Do you want to say hi? No. Of course not. Um, <laughs> she's shy. Um, but one of the... One of the things is he was always thinking of others, and so I remember when I was little, he used to wear these giant 70s style glasses, um, and I was so embarrassed of him, um, and I never wanted to be seen with him, like, we all said, oh, Dad, we hate those glasses. And so then, um, one day, he decided he was going to get LASIK eye surgery, not for himself, he didn't care, he liked his glasses just fine, they were these transition lenses. He, he thought they were great, but um, but he did it for us, <laughs> so that we wouldn't feel embarrassed of him. Um, and he was always he was always giving, and so I remember at restaurants he would give um, well over twenty percent tip, <laughs> and mom would get so mad at him. <laughs> it's way too much, Bill. <laughs> and like, he, but he insisted, and um, so it's okay. And uh, it's. You know, partly because he was a giving person. He also works in, in the restaurant business uh, at the Varsity Inn, and so he knew how hard it was. And um, after I'm done. And, <laughs> and, um, and uh, so he knew how hard it was and how the you know, re restaurant workers aren't paid very well. And then also, I, I wish that um, 
Mike and Diane were still here, but I think they had to leave. Those were the parents of my preschool friends, um, Mara and Anna, and we, we grew up together. I actually am still in contact with Mara. She lives, I live in Berkeley, California now. She lives uh, in South Berkeley, so we, small world, we're still together. But anyway, um, he was always trying to make us laugh and always playing with us, and I remember one thing was that he would say, are you guys ready to go play, you squirrels? And, and we would laugh and say, we're not squirrels, we're girls. <laughs> he's, always, he's always silly like that, had all these puns. And, um, and then finally, he just gave so much of his time to me. Um, I think it's fitting that we're in a gym because he was my basketball coach um, when I was little. And, um, he, I don't feel like he was ever appreciated the way he should have been. I know there were parents who would get mad because their girls weren't playing enough time or whatever, but I know he always tried to be fair and to try to give each each girl um, some time to play on the team, even if they accidentally shot it in the wrong hoop. <laughs> um, and then also, um, many of you know I was an ice skater, and he would wake up early for six, and... Um, we would sit there and eat breakfast and read the comics together, and then he would drive me to the rink, and sometimes the owners wouldn't be there to open up the rink. <laughs> but he, even though he had to go to work, he would sit there with me in the car until the owners came. Um, and hope, you know, this happened actually numerous times because they weren't very punctual, but... Um, <laughs> but that was, that was him. He was dedicating his time and his energy and his his whole life to others and, and um, to his family in particular. Thank you all for being here. Gathered at Mary and Bill's house in January, and it was it was winter time, 
But as I left there, I, I recalled a beautiful warm summer day with three of my best buddies cruising Green Lake in March 56 Murphy with all the windows down and uh, over to the bar to eat for a Billy Burger afterwards and, and plan our lives out. And these guys have been my friends, and we are all friends through all those years. <coughs> Bill was a great guy. He got better grades than us. He filled out his paperwork for life before we did, and he got an A+. Plus. Uh, we're believers, so when we go to that next life, wherever that is, if there is a 56 Merc around, you can be sure that Billy will be, have made positive that the oil has changed, the gas tank is full, and the car is washed. <laughs> and we're going to take one more last cruise. Rest in peace, my dear friend. Uh, how come you guys aren't in school? 
Because <laughs> in Portland, those kids were still in, you know, it wasn't coordinated with our spring vacation. So that was uh, probably one of the rare instances of uh, involvement with these set of authorities. We just, we did everything together in all those years. And this one kind of stood out because when my mom was still alive, I mentioned it to her three or four years ago. <coughs> and she just totally denied it. Because, what do you mean kids, 14, went on the, this adventure by themselves to Portland? You know? <laughs> These days, uh, when my kids are growing up in Seattle, I don't want them to go to Munich, or I wouldn't go downtown, let them and jump on <coughs> So, um, you know, looking back, it just, we all share these kind of memories. You look back and you see who you grew up with, the kind of experiences you had. And, uh, how can I be? How can I be a better life for friends? So, yeah, it, it's we sure missed it. And, and again, like Danny said, I'm so thankful that Mary uh, got the word out to us. Uh, we were able to see Bill a few times in the last couple of weeks, and what, but what a, what a just a pleasure and joy, in spite of the circumstances. It was, it was just totally thankful. Um, well, Mutt and Jeff will meet again someday, and uh, we'll personally go over a lot of these stories again. Thank you.
name is Rick Temple, and I work for Grand Michigan Company. And I started to work at Grand in 1995. I was a single dad with two children, and um, I was lucky enough to get to take the green VW camper, <laughs> the green machine. Bill asked me, I had been there for about a year, I think, and Bill asked me if my boys liked to go camping. We had heard that we were going to go on a church outing at a church that I attended, and uh, offered to use this VW camper, green machine. And we did. And I have a picture of myself and the two boys in front of this, this green machine. And um, my concern was that he said, we'll just swap vehicles for the weekend. I'll drive it to work on Friday. You can take it home Friday night and go on your thing. And my concern was that I had this really, really nasty Geo Metro, early 1990s, <laughs> horrible car. And I really felt like this was Bill that you know, was worked with us every day. We would see him day in and day out. And what a nice person he was. And he, there was a difference between him just being the boss and you know, he became his friend. And if you worked there, you part of the brand of family. And uh, there was lots of problems that I had with this car. I couldn't afford to fix them because I was a single dad trying to make it with my two boys. And, uh, but we swapped vehicles for the weekend, and then when I got back, we brought the vehicle to the, brought the green machine to work Monday morning, and Bill said, did you know how bad your tires were in your car? And I said, yeah, I did. And he said, and you take your boys out of that car? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, I put new tires in your car. And I said, I, I didn't know what to say. And I was just, Bill, th thank you. I, I, don't, I, I couldn't afford new tires. He said, now you don't need to. So I had the pleasure of, of uh, being experiencing personally for myself part of the Brandon family and what that means to me um, all these years later and uh, early on in my, my time there um, for him to do that. That was the kind of person that Bill was.
tell you a story that I've told for years and years and years. And Mary remembers it differently than I do, but <laughs> I remember Billy being, he was kind of chunky, kind of had this brown chunkiness. And, uh, and he was a chunky little ninth grader, a chunky little tenth grader, and he had these funky, funky looking glasses. And uh, Mary was in this auditorium at Lincoln High School, being introduced because she was going to go spend the year in Germany or something like that. Billy was up in the, in the rafters looking down at this gorgeous girl, and he said, I'm going to meet that girl, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask her out. So that's that year, his junior year, and Mary was going to her Germany. He slimmed down, and he got contacts, and he just, he, Mary came back, and boy, that, that's history. <laughs>
and uh, and even um, and, and also he would talk to me. He would he would say more than just hi. Yeah, and I was only like twelve at the time. And this is the first time I've ever met an older uh, an older uh, person, especially an older man, older as a teenager. Would say more than two words to me. And, and then and then he would even let me um, pitch baseballs to him while he was wearing his suit and tie. <laughs> so I was a little late, so I was obsessed with, with throwing the ball around. And uh, he wrote a Vespa to school. I went, he must have even more, been writing his Vespa with his suit and tie on. But, but he'd take me around the neighborhood once in a while, around Wallingford, on, uh, on his scooter. And, and uh, let's see. Oh, I turned 13 that year. He gave me a, he gave me a card that said, uh, congratulations, Tim, uh, your teen years will be the greatest years of your life, or something like that, which, of course, isn't true, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really made me feel good. And, and, and the one other thing I remember is um, that Christmas, uh, under the tree, he, he had brought a bunch of presents, mostly for, for Mary, of course, <laughs> but he also had wrapped up... Um, he had wrapped up a, uh, about 50 big ballpoint pens in foil. I don't know if you remember this or not, but the reason was because our parents on their, on their telephone desk um, always had, had pencils and pens in these cans, but, but nine times out of ten, the pens never worked. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be run out of it, but, but they but they didn't get thrown away. They would stay in the <laughs> And so Bill took it on himself to buy like 50 all kinds of pounds to replace it. That's the sort of thing it was. <laughs>
at all costs. And Tim Mary's older brother, and I could never understand how it was that Bill found an interest in Mary. <laughs> Bill was a very special man, a very precious man. He was very kind and generous, just like uh, we've heard. I, and he was a good student, too. I could never understand, visiting over at the SAE house, how it was that Steve, Steve could sit there and uh, play bridge till 2 o'clock in the morning and win, am I right? And then go to class and pull straight A's. Bill had to study. And I never did. <laughs> but I tried to get him not to study. Isn't that true? <clears throat> we had some very good times together. Mary likes to tell the story about uh, how we uh, went ice skating. Except, like Robbie was saying, he didn't really like ice skating. Of course, I knew that. And so, uh, this is down at the, uh, what's the Seattle Arena. I don't know if it's still called Seattle Arena. Is it? And across the street was a little tavern. Now, I had just turned 21, and Bill hadn't. <laughs> but we went across the street to the tavern instead of ice cream. Right? And uh, we proceeded to order uh, some libation, and, and we had some, and we were good. And then the waitress came up, and she looked at Bill. Are you 21? She asked. Well, yes, I am. And this is a, 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 it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I had uh, slipped Bill one of uh, my IDs. I think it had a picture on it. And uh, she said, well, stand up. And, uh, Bill did. She said, you don't look like this picture. You don't even look this long. I've been sick. <laughs> you Mary, Mark, John, Christina, Robbie. Family and friends of our dear brother Billy Brown. St. Paul writes, Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, which is a, a part of uh, the epistle lesson for tomorrow, which is reminiscible. Sunday, reminiscible. Remember. Second Sunday of Lent, and Pastor Lastman uh, came past this uh, passage and this message uh, this morning. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. What a wonderful epitaph for God. And for us all, our citizenship is in heaven. We live in the here and now, but for Jesus' sake, heaven is our home. We don't deserve the reward of the heavenly matches for anything good we might have done in this life. It's all because Jesus is able to change our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. Yes, we might have some change of attitude in this life due to his Holy Spirit's powerful working in our lives to move us in a good direction, away from all that is rotten and filthy. But that transformation is not of our doing, and it's not perfect. Only in heaven do we have glorious bodies when and where Jesus is able to change our lowly bodies to be like his. Many things can and have been said of our friend and brother, most of them good, some of them funny, hardly any of the bad. But we know each and every one of us deep way down and because of all the suffering we have or of any kind of whatever length and duration, it is because of the sin which clings so tenaciously to each and every one of us that we do suffer so. We get what we deserve. We die. Bill was blessed with a good attitude, a generous heart. Also, he was blessed with the means and the resource to be kind to others, and he was. 
But all of us can do what he did. Some of us wouldn't want to. We'd be a little more selfish than he was. We'd hold it all a little closer to the best. We feel a little better about ourselves because of our own ease of comfort. You wonder what drives a person to do the things he or she does. Mention has been made of the Rotary Club Award, which Bill received early on in the last impression it made. I'm sure also that Ray and Vera had good influence. Your brothers and sisters, the family, I know you encouraged and supported Bill all along the way. I remember one time when not all of the Santas showed up or could show up at the Children's Hospital Christmas party. So Bill got me to dress up in one of those suits. I'm a smaller now. I had a good time giving away candy and gum and saying Merry Christmas to a bunch of kids suffering and dying from cancer just as Bill has done. It made me feel good inside. At one point, I remember I couldn't help myself, although it sounds peculiar to say it. I did say it. It's okay. Jesus has you in his hands. As our own. Ultimately, our good works do not and cannot measure up to the exact demands of God's holy law. We don't, we don't always say it right. We don't always say enough. We don't always make the difference in others people, other people's lives as we'd like to. God does. That's the beauty of it all. We have a Savior. Bill has a Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ has, will, and does transform our lowly bodies to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him to object to subject all things unto Himself. The curse has all been taken away by Christ Jesus. The blessing has been bestowed on us in His name. Having been freed from sin, from death, and from the tyranny of the devil, the entire world is made free. The law of God is completely canceled and repealed. Our sins are forgiven. And eternal salvation and everlasting life are given to those who believe in Jesus. Uh, this last part is from Mark Luther. I'm just sure. Was <laughs> Bill was indeed so very kind to so very many, and that will not be forgotten. He was a good brother-in-law to me. He was a good friend. We always seemed to enjoy each other's company. He even put up with me. We liked to visit with one another, visit about the world and things going on around us in this world, visit about heaven, the things that are coming each and every one of us for Jesus' sake. And God will be with us. And Bill told me, you always get seasick, so he wasn't sure he wanted to go. He says, why don't you get seasick? I'll go. So both Bill and I are both on the boat. Bill's on the railing. Bill was a very special person. I left home when I was 17 and uh, to find my future in jazz drumming. That's my life. And uh, so I didn't get to be around Bill a whole lot, but every time I go to the Christmas party, I'd come home. Bill would be up there telling those bad jokes again. So I'd stand up after sitting next to Mary and I'd counter some of those bad jokes that's on the mind. And poor Mary would have to cover her eyes because it was so terrible. So uh, I didn't get to see Bill for 20 or 30 years because of my travels, but. Uh, I miss him very much. I love him very much.
this guy. And he comes up to me and he says, Why, Mary, where have you been all my life? And he picks me up in his arms and he twirls me around like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
want to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 